there, this is Diego. Uh, today is Friday, um, May 5th, 2016. I'm going to uh, Community College Elon uh, to see their developments or their robots, just to see their, uh, you know, the work that they're doing. Everything is new to us right now, so it will be a really good experience to see everything that they're doing, the trusses that they're using, the kind of uh, electronics they're using. Today. It's also raining, so pretty. Kind of, it's kind of cool, though. It's beautiful. There, I'm here in Ilac. Uh, just arrived, just parked behind me. Here is from Silak. Yay! So, I believe that's the building we're going to. Uh, E7. Man, it's looking really, really nice. I love it. So, I think that's seven. That's when I'm going. Okay, guys, so we made it to Coste and they're showing us their. Uh, what they have so far for their robots up. Uh, this right here this seems to be another project they're working on. A human power vehicle looks like. Pretty neat. So let's take a look to the robots up. water jet cut aluminum to any shape that you want, you can have any frame design, but for us, for our budget and for the machinery that we have at hand, we quickly realized that some of the really cool, really great ideas weren't feasible. So Owen, this is our programmer. So Alright Owen. I'm on my lunch break. <laughs> 20 minutes. Oh, so drop by and okay. <laughs> this is the guy that's going to make it actually happen. Just like on my girlfriend, just drop by. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're in camera, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> San Diego State, their, their second year competing, they took it home. And what they did was their Jeez. first year, they did pretty much what we're doing, is they made a working prototype. And with that, they were able to do well enough. They placed, I think, in the top 15 yeah. that first year. And they did it with a budget of about $5,000. Um, because they got there with that budget, uh, this year, they went back and got sponsorships for about $80,000. So with that $80,000, they were then able to do what they wanted to do. Kind of our goal this year is to set it up so that the team is ready, it happens, we build momentum, so that next year, the team that's going to be coming in, um, will be able to kind of pick up where we left off and have more resources. Do you have a, uh, a business team that is like, Handling uh, relationships to the outside. To, okay. There was a lot of confusion on what we could and could not do with regards to the campus. Uh -huh. um, there's there's rules about if we're getting sponsorship from the college, we can't approach companies that are not owned for sponsorship. It's like the college has to do it on our behalf. Okay. So there was a lot of back and forth on. Yeah. Who, so how are we going to get money in? Who do we approach? How have you been able to finance so far? Uh, through outreach programs that we've been doing through the campus, we then get money funneled to us. So okay. um, there's a there's a program on here on campus called uh, Engineering Fundamentals, and what they do is they have us students teach um, eight to twelve year olds um, engineering basics, and it's a five week course and it's once a week. But the parents are paying money for their children to do that, and, and that some of that money is funneled into us. We have raised, um, they have matched funding on campus, so like if you raise $5,000, in theory, the school ASU would invest $5,000 as well. Uh, okay. It turns out though that our competition is outside of the fiscal year, so they're not able to match fund us. It's, it's outside of the fiscal year. So you might okay. want to keep that in mind because the competition is at the end of July, beginning of August. Okay. One thing that I would recommend you guys straight out from the top is 
fundraise as much as you can in the beginning. This was just actually, uh, it's a based off a design that we saw online. Some guy did a DIY okay. uh, ROV and it was something that was like, okay, that looks easy enough. We can probably do that because we just wanted to make sure that we can that we could control it and program it the way we wanted it to. Mm -hmm. The design itself was kind of secondary. So does it submerge? It does. Okay. Um, and the, I guess the second toughest thing we had to figure out was how buoyancy works. Right. Um, you're used to things like I throw it on water, it floats or it doesn't. Yeah. You don't really feel the science behind it. You know that force pushing it up is equal to the weight of the water displaced by the object in it. And once you get that down, it's, it's kind of know how to work. But so how, of, how are you managing buoyancy right now? Uh, all well. of these PVC pipes, you can see they have holes drilled into them. Okay. So as it gets into the water, the air is escaping uh -huh. and it is essentially becoming mutually buoyant. It neither sinks nor floats. The marines have ballast tanks. Yes. That's a complex system that I don't think you're going to be able to integrate mm -hmm. into the regular robo so that you want to build. Or can you? <laughs> what is this here? Uh, that was just a that was a like a placeholder for housing that we were gonna have a camera in. What are your thrusters? How how uh, how do they behave? Yeah. Um, so like the thrusters that we have here are from a company called Blue Robotic. When we were first looking at thrusters, what was the price range we were looking at? Two three thousand each yeah. at the low end. Uh, Six hundred was the cheapest we found. Six hundred two thousand. So how much were these? About 150. Okay, I have a question. How does this turn? Like, you know, like go left, one, right? One will one go will forward go. while the other goes in reverse and it turns. Oh, like How are you controlling your, your thrusters right now? <laughs> Is that an Arduino, right? Yes. You, it's an Arduino? Okay. So, yeah, so right now, this one right here can control these three. It's an Arduino Uno. Uh -huh. And it has a USB shield. And you all wire for right now? You're, you're controlling it to, via cables? Yes. So, okay, so, so you just put it. What would happen is the power supply yeah. and the board connects. Oh, that's your motor controller. Yeah, connects to this. Uh, these ones are specific for Blue Robotics. Okay, they, oh, they make awesome. them with their thrusters. Okay, here, mm -hmm. see? And these are the thrusters. I, you know what? I'm so happy to see the size. Yeah. That they're tiny like that. I, I'm, I'm very loving, happy to see I'm that. I'm loving Blue Robotics so much. Their size, it's pretty compact, but you get pretty much the equivalent power. I mean, for the 2000. Um, dollar one, they get eight foot pounds of thrust. This gives us five for $150. Really simple to control. It's just PWM. Very easy to power. Your, your electronics are never submerged with this guy just yet. Not yet. No, you no. just control from the table. For our final version, all the electronics are actually going to be housed for you. Yeah, um, that's how they did it. The other common design that we saw were acrylic tubes, mm -hmm. and that was actually the way we were leaning. But the problem is the motherboard that we're using to run all the electronics off of mm -hmm. is 10 inches wide at its largest port, um, and the largest diameter acrylic tube we could find was seven inches. I guess so, that's a bit of an issue. Yeah. So rather than try to figure anything out, we decided we're going to go with the Pelican case. And this is actually all the framing that we're going to be working with today. Uh, what it looks like, what like to put look together. Like. I actually have a solid work. All, the, all that framework that you saw inside the case is going to become these holdings where the thrusters are going to be attached. As far as vision though, how do you plan to, because yeah. I don't see on this box we how you're going to put... Uh, we have two web cameras, it's actually bought from McMaster, McMaster Car, exactly okay. as it is. It's, uh, the reason why we got this is it's really easy to slide stuff yeah. in and then just attach it. So it's it's really easy to work with, you can cut it with a chop saw, uh, it's, it's really light, it's pretty darn strong. How much do you pay for the box? That's $150 right there. $150? Yes. Wow. Well, we better like check out how they're doing it. So can you see this right here? It's watertight. It's you, but watertight. you see, this is, this is what yeah. we're gonna be aiming for. You see that, that gasket right there? Yeah. And then you have this, this guys here. So, I mean, we're not gonna have a box, but this is exact idea, you see? The concealment. Yeah, we, yeah. We'll, we'll design with that in mind. So, yeah, but this is good to see. If you guys are designing your watertight holes You can see there's a gasket um, here. The more time this, you this thing's gotta think for itself. It's gotta maneuver itself. On the floor, there are these strips of PVC, like, this Okay. That the robot, the bottom view of the camera can see okay. and follow. Okay. okay. Um, then there is fingers, right? It's a star, right? It has to 
it vibrates. And now the robot's like, okay, I gotta narrow down, frankly, where it was. Go towards it. Uh, so that's the two methods of navigation. I guess I'm a mechanical engineer. So I, okay. Yeah. I designed the hole. On it. Uh, what, basically, what I designed it to surround the box because they wanted a, a protective cage for selling custom L brackets in my, in my workshop. This thing can take around 200 pounds of uh, abuse before it bends. The torpedo, is the, that's what it is? Right? Yeah. So the way. The way this works is I have capacitors, which are only gonna, they can only hold a certain amount of charge. Here I had a, a circuit board that will receive electrical current, it will charge these to about 90% of the capacity. Then it will let go, it will let go of the charge all in one shot. Uh, ready? Can you rotate it? There you go, look at that man. Very nice. <laughs> Yeah, this is my original one. This entire frame you see up here, all they do is move it down. Oh, yeah. I have another one I can show you that was supposed to be our original. Oh, yeah, yeah, let me see it. Okay. Okay, so this is his initial idea model. I'm assuming that you just put the keys in. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. We'll mix it from here. And this bottom one's supposed to be a frame, uh, a, a, a stage frame to hold all the uh, claw, the dropper, the camera. So the thing is, uh, you can see the L brackets I made. These are actually the accurate ones. These are dead on accurate to the one I have, uh, which I showed you. Okay, keep in mind, remember, I idle, right? Just the motherboard running, no thrusters, no nothing. Yeah, this guy could power this guy for about a week. That's your camera? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Hang on, let me see if it's in here. Oh, nice. That's gonna be it. I need to design a hole for this. So come up and hopefully drive back. Oh, it's on the July 24th. We need, we need to get there on July 24th. I believe it starts the next day after, July, July 25th. Oh, okay, July 24th is Sunday. July 25th is the day competition. Mm -hmm. All members have to be present. Yeah. Uh, or, yeah, all members have to be present. Someone can come in or out afterwards. Yeah, no problem. Okay. He's like the idea guy. I'll send you up for you guys. Yeah, yeah. If you want your brain to explode, go talk to Eddie. <laughs> so here's the robot team at this stage yeah. right now. All the engineers to be. <laughs> 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 the stack of the, the, the elevator.